Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Shilpa Abraham, the moderator for today's earnings call. I welcome and thank each one of you for joining us today for the Q2 Fiscal Year 25 Earnings Conference call of Punjab and Sindh Bank. Please note that this conference is being recorded and all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the opening remarks by the management. Should you need any assistance during the conference call, please raise your hand on the WebEx panel or press star 3 hash on your phone. I repeat, should you need any assistance during the conference call, please raise your hand on the WebEx panel or press star 3 hash on your phone. I would now like to introduce the management of Punjab and Sindh Bank. We have with us today Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer Shri Swaroop Kumar Saha, Executive Director Shri Ravi Mehra, Executive Director Shri Rajiva, and Chief Financial Officer Shri Arnab Goswami. I would now like to hand over the conference to Shri Swaroop Kumar Saha, MD and CEO of Punjab and Sindh Bank, for the opening remarks, after which we will have the forum open for the interactive Q&A session. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Shilpa. And good afternoon, everybody who have joined this Q2 earnings con call of Punjab and Sindh Bank. It's, ple it's a pleasure for me to have you here uh, and, and interact with you on the bank's performance of the second quarter of the current financial year. So you, uh, the uh, yeah. results were already declared on, on 19th and the uh, presentations was already uploaded in the stock exchanges. I'm, I, I'm very sure all of you must have got the opportunity to uh, go through our presentations. Uh, but uh, just to set the context of today's uh, interaction and for this con call, uh, I'll just like to mention a few of the highlights of uh, Q2 performance of Punjab and Sindh Bank. And from where then we can go into the uh, Q&A session. So the business highlights of the Bank uh, is that the bank's business grew at 8.4 percent to 215,057 crores. The deposits grew at 6.48 percent with uh, at 124,025 crores, and the gross advances grew at 11.14 percent and reached 91,032 crores. Uh, the RAM segment grew at 18 percent plus. The RAM percentage we also shown a 317 bips uh, YOY improvement at and now stands at. 53.86%, which is in line with our guidance uh, for the uh, for the entire year, which we like to take it beyond 56% by uh, by March. In terms of the in terms of the efficiency ratios, uh, we are very happy to uh, uh, state that the operating profit of the bank for Q2 increased by 76.15%. The net profit increased to uh, 240 crores and, and increased by 26.98% YOY. And this was possible by a robust net interest income of a growth of 29.33%, uh, which stood at for the quarter 873 crores. The net interest margin, uh, which was also which has also shown a good improvement, both YOY and uh, partially sequentially, uh, has improved by 38 bips for the quarter end uh, Q2. Uh, the cost to income ratio, which was one of the areas where we were uh, facing challenges and we were trying to address it into our various strategies. Uh, this time has been uh, reduced to 62.82 for the quarter, a uh, substantial reduction of 958 bips uh, from a year-on-year -year basis. Uh, the return on assets was at 0 0.65, showing an improvement of 1300 uh, bips, uh, 13 bips, sorry, 13 bips on a YOY basis. Uh, the gross NPA percentage has also shown uh, improvement uh, and has reduced to 4.21% uh, uh, from a reduction of 202 bips. The net NP has reduced to 1.46%, a reduction of 42 bips for YOY. This was possible uh, for in terms of our management of our asset quality, our collection efficiency, and accordingly the fresh slippages was grossly reduced to 230 crores uh, for the quarter. Uh, the uh, one of the important component of our income this time was has been the uh, significant contribution of the core fee income, which has increased by 35.88 percent uh, during the uh, during the qu uh, quarter. So uh, these were some of the uh, numbers uh, the of of the bank, of course the Casa. Uh, uh, as you all know, understand that the Casa 
is the deposit mobilization. Uh, there is a lag between deposit and credit uh, uh, growth. So uh, for us also, we are still in that uh, area of challenges, but we are trying a level best to uh, improve the CASA plus return term deposit component. The CASA marginally reduced to 30.43%. Uh, but the traction of retail term deposit uh, is still on. We are nearly at 9% YOY growth in terms of the uh, retail term deposits. Uh, the uh, the advances breakup still remains uh, robust with uh, the, uh, in terms of our September, uh, if you see our September numbers, 64.25% uh, of the total credit profile above five crores was in the triple B and above, which is and primarily concentrated on the triple A and, uh, and double A's uh, of the of the of the uh, portfolio. So the core fee income actually, as I said, had increased uh, by 35.88 percent. In fact, there has been a sequential increase of 26.05 percent also uh, this quarter. Uh, uh, we all understand that in view of the market dynamics, uh, the Treasury has uh, contributed and, and that has also uh, uh, shown a, a good uh, in, a contribution to the overall non-interest income of 359 crores uh, for, the, for the quarter. So our, uh, our gross NPH and net NPH, that is the asset quality, has shown significant improvement. The slippage ratio has improved and for the quarter it stands at 0 0.28. The PCR also uh, is an area where we are working on. Uh, is at 88.56 percent. This, as I have already said, that the yield on advance, uh, as I already said, that the fresh slippages of the various segments have also uh, uh, improved. And particularly, you know, that being a geographically uh, uh, skewed in the in the northern part of the country, the agriculture is always a, a, a area of challenge for us uh, in the September quarter. And you, and it is heartening to see that the agriculture slippages for the quarter has been reduced to 85 crores in September uh, compared to 144 crores uh, of the September quarter uh, last year. Uh, the cost of deposit has, uh, we all understand that, the cost of deposit has sequentially uh, increased from 5.64 to 5.74. We are addressing that through our uh, mobilization of CASA and retail term deposit. A lot of uh, those step services are being uh, implemented a lot of new products are being implemented so we will be able to uh, we are trying to build that traction in terms of uh, deposit uh, mo uh, mobilization so that in and we are taking a lot of new and the capital adequacy uh, was stands at 16.89 without the calculation of the uh, you know, contribution of the half yearly profits uh, of course the numbers will increase if you add the uh, net profit for the half year and the capital adequacy will improve to 17.47 percent if we improve that. A uh, lot of uh, we are expanding our branches uh, to uh, we are as of now we are 1580 branches. Uh, we have already opened 17 branches this year. We have a plan of opening total of 100 branches for the current year. We continue to work on that. We are also increasing our BC network uh, and our ATM network a uh, lot of initiatives have been taken on the on the digital front. Some of them have been highlighted in slide number 34. A uh, few various collaborations have also been uh, uh, have been done uh, over the last uh, three four months, particularly for defense accounts, for salary accounts, for uh, uh, for potential Punjab centric strategies at uh, and tying up with collaborating with Punjab Agriculture University, ISB Mohali. Uh, we also got the uh, uh, wealth tech partner system for the mutual fund and the uh, DMAT business on our app. We have also tied up with the warehousing development and regulatory authority for e receipt financing. So these were some of the key highlights of of the bank uh, for the Q2 uh, quarter two uh, quarter two of the of FY twenty four twenty five. And I will pause here. And I'm now we are now in, as a team ready to uh, take your, your uh, question and answers. Thank you. Over to you, Shilpa. Thank you, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. 
I request the participants to please limit their questions to two per person and rejoin the queue for any additional questions. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may raise their hand by clicking on the raised hand icon on your WebEx panel. For those who have joined us via audio call and wish to ask a question, please press star 3 hash. If anyone is having connectivity or audio issues, you may share your questions on WhatsApp to us at 790-743-1859. I repeat, if anyone is having connectivity or audio issues, you may share your questions on WhatsApp to us at 790-743-1859. Before asking the question, I request you to please introduce yourself and your organization. Our first question is from the line of Sri Ashok Ajmera from Ajmera Associates. Sir, please go ahead with your question. Uh, uh, correct you. I am Ajmera, not from Ajmera and Associates. That's a different Ajmera. I am from Ajkon Global. So, uh, having said that, uh, sir, Apologies, compl sir. compliments to you, Shah uh, uh, Thank you, Mr. Ajmeraji, for a really good set of numbers, uh, especially in this quarter as compared to the last quarter. And uh, uh, we have reasonably grown our credit book also, which is very, very heartening to know. And uh, so, I have got just a couple of observations and some questions. Uh, Sir, our major contributor uh, uh, in the net profit or the profit, if you talk about this quarter, is uh, uh, non-interest income. I mean, uh, almost as compared to the last quarter, almost 165 crore out of your uh, total income of 307 crore has come from uh, uh, non-interest income. And that is also, you also said in your opening remarks, the core fee income good investment, uh, you know, sale of investment and uh, profit on the revaluation of investment. So, my point is that going forward uh, in the remaining two quarter of FI25, are we going to see the same trend uh, in our profitability so as to make a proper assessment of the profitability for the whole year, uh, number one. And uh, number, number two, uh, in this uh, uh, round of the questioning, you also said that there is some areas of challenges because the whole thing, whole interest uh, changes have not been factored in so far because there is a time lag. So, what kind of impact it can be on the NIM and uh, what is your target of the NIM for the whole year? This is my first question. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Ajmera and appreciate your questions. Uh, uh, you are absolutely right when you, when you have analyzed it that the, the major part of the Q2 results was due to the uh, the a significant contribution of non-interest income. Uh, and if you see our sequential performance, so nearly around uh, 165 watt crores have been increased in terms of the uh, non-interest income. Uh, uh, primarily due to the treasury, uh, which has shown uh, uh, as the market moved and then yields moved downward uh, and trend, we had the opportunity to uh, to contribute and, and accordingly they have, uh, the bank has done that. Now, going forward in this, uh, in this, uh, in this area, yes, uh, we feel that the movement will not be uh, in Q3, uh, particularly, uh, the movement where it stands now, uh, the benchmark yields, uh, may, uh, may uh, moderate a bit more, but we still don't know. We have to, be, uh, though the RBI uh, future projections on the policy cuts, we all know what is the stance at this point of time, though the official stance has uh, undergone a change, but on the point of the rate cut, uh, it re still remains to be seen when it happens. And of course, the global uh, uh, scenario that is also moving uh, in, in, in various directions uh, in the ecosystem. So uh, we, we feel that there will be a moderation in the income uh, on, from the non-interest side, uh, from the treasury side. But uh, if you see uh, the other part is that the core in fee income, other than the treasury, has also uh, moved uh, significantly forward. In, in this in this quarter, and we have taken a lot of efforts uh, to improve this. In fact, if you see that there's a nearly 56 crore sequential increase in the core fee income, and this is an area of uh, where we feel that the whatever whatever uh, short uh, may come, it may come or may not come, but we have to be prepared 
So we are preparing ourselves that whatever shortfall may come from the treasury side because of the uh, lesser movement in the yields, uh, we'll be able to make it up through our uh, through our co free income, number one. And number two, what we are also doing is that, uh, as you see, uh, if you see our movement of our advanced portfolio, the we have been telling, talking on this uh, con consistently uh, over, on our calls that you are moving to the RAM segment where the yields improve and we are churning our corporate portfolio. So now the, the figure stands nearly at 54%. It is 53.86% as a RAM side. And we, we want to move it to 56%. So the NII, if you see also, is showing a good traction of 29%. I think uh, uh, if you compare the 29% NII growth uh, uh, for the results that have been declared so far, you will find that the bank is, our bank has been yeah. in a favorable position in that segment at least compared to the other banks. So we are churning our corporate portfolio, moving from the high yielding assets towards the, uh, uh, sorry, moving from the low yielding assets to the high yielding assets. And we will continue to churn the corporate portfolio uh, because as we discussed earlier, also the pricing is very competitive. So we will be able to make it up. We have already strategized our plan post the declaration of this result uh, amongst in the bank. And we have already un uh, uh, understood uh, what are the one-off gains that we have got in Q2 and how do we need to rebalance, how do we need to recompensate from the other side if that one-off items do not uh, have face continuity in in the in the uh, in Q3. And third option that we have also kept open is that we are giving a lot of focus on recovery and recovery uh, in return of accounts. Uh, the Q2 numbers may not ju uh, justify those efforts, but there are a lot of things in the pipeline which will also help to boost the uh, the non-interest income. And uh, if the, and if those goes through. And we are very hopeful that some of them will go through the, the things that we have in the pipeline. That will also compensate some, to some extent the, uh, the shortfall that may occur in terms of the treasury performance. So these are three of some of the, uh, uh, some of the, uh, on the issues of, of the treasury. And your second question was also on the NIM, on the NIM side. So we feel that we have improved to 2.71. And as, with all the things that we said now, we are hopeful that by the by end of March, we shall be in a position to be at around 2.75 plus uh, because we have some strategic thought process in that. It is a challenging environment. Deposit uh, uh, is, is, is a challenge. Deposit cost is a challenge, but we will churn our portfolios accordingly, move our investments accordingly, and try to maintain that, uh, that uh, uh, name up around 2.75 plus uh, for the March quarter. Uh, sir, thank you, sir. Uh, very elaborate reply and point well taken, sir. Having said that, I've got just one more question on this in this round. Uh, sir, uh, you have done really well on the credit uh, growth side in this quarter. It is almost about 3,294. And if it was the whole year, uh, you have done almost about 5,100 crore something. So with that and with the visibility and with the confidence which you replied even the, uh, the earlier question also, don't you think that we can increase our credit target from 12% to 14% or 15% growth because even looking at this quarter, if we just multiply with another two quarters, you 6,500 additionally you can raise in the next two quarters as against required amount of only 5,000 crore. So, yeah. So, do, so is yeah. it are, are you revisiting the number and giving us some revised target for that, sir? We are, see, uh, we, you're right. First of all, I must acknowledge what you're saying. Uh, and you have been saying this repeatedly for us. So uh, <laughs> yeah. we take it uh, uh, like that. And uh, you're absolutely right. In your assessment, with a base like our bank of, that we have, we should grow faster. There's no doubt yeah. about it. But the point, Mr. Ajmera, I think you will appreciate that you will, if you see the two trends so far for the banking industry as such, there is a moderation in the credit growth. Right. Yes. And if, if when, when banks of larger sizes are moderating their credit growth, there is a genuine reason why they are moderating it. What is what is our uh, what would be our uh, in that uh, strategy now in that way? We are keeping the guidance. If you have if you have an opportunity to grow beyond ten to twelve percent, we will of course grow. 
but we not to we need to grow profitably mr ajmera that is what i am yes. trying to do we are trying to say that we we need to do a sustainable growth uh, i am not naming the publicity banks you will find that some of the banks so far has grown less than our bank has grown so there is a there is a, a component of challenge of the deposit mobilization where we feel that and i have told this two three quarters ago that the that the uh, credit growth that was hap- that is happening in the industry uh, is not sustainable and that is exactly what is it is falling in line and it will happen because uh, if you see the private sector banks also they, uh, their conversations you must be attending you will find that the same uh, thought process is 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 going through their minds also so what i'm trying to simply say at the end of the story the bottom line is that we can grow but if we have a grow if we have an opportunity to grow at a higher yielding asset will of course grow we will we will not grow at at the cost of my uh, uh, deposits if my cost of deposit has 5.74 and if i if my deposit uh, uh, suppose that the, the bulk deposits the cds have grown is is just going very high so i need to grow i need to deploy funds much more than that so i maintain my name i maintain my nii so that is the overall strategy if if high yielding assets come in our way we will we'll definitely do what we are doing now is that why we have kept the conservative guidance of 10 to 12 because the corporate we are having some low yielding assets because of the price movements we are trying to churn them we have told the uh, big corporates that yes please increase our pricing to some x level otherwise please pre- prepay our loans that that churning is process is going on and that's a big number so that we are keeping that option open so that overall my nim and nii and my roa gets protected very good sir thank you very much uh, for uh, just uh, again giving the confidence and you are absolutely right the bottom line is ultimately end of the day is also very very important and but uh, you know after the last few quarters i mean now we see that uh, i mean uh, uh, you know like you are doing better than the industry in some of the except that one bank which is bank of maharashtra which has always been the uh, forefront uh, in fact uh, irrespective of the size of the bank but otherwise yes there is a lot of improvement in our bank also sir thank you very thank much thank you sir thank you mr ajmera good to hear that thank you sir our next question is from the line of mr saket sir please go ahead with your question sir go ahead yeah mr saket good afternoon uh hello namaskar sir and uh, thank you for thank you for this opportunity sir uh, you, you have mentioned about 10 to 12% uh, uh, loan growth uh, for the current financial year sir uh, yeah. i missed your number yeah. yeah 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 that's in my slide also if you see the last yeah, slide yeah, of course yes, yes, okay yeah. and sir taking into account the current at uh, business environment uh, uh, what what is your current uh, take as we see the consumption pattern uh, uh, also slowing down and the 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 what whatever the G- gdp numbers have been they are also pointing towards stress in the system so uh, uh, what uh, what are you penciling in in terms of this 10 to 12% growth wherein you are uh, categorically uh, moving towards your ram uh, trajectory so uh, But what are the factors that you are uh, that you have uh, factored in in giving this 10 to 12% loan growth when the underlying uh, sentiments uh, uh, if i may use the word have been uh, de- de- deteriorating or are, are on the uh, de- negative side right i think that, and that's a, that's a fair question in terms of the ecosystem that that is playing out uh, what i what you like to say is that from our bank's perspective uh, Uh, historically we had a higher proportion of corporates and one of one three four corporates going bust had a lot of negative impact on the bank and so we have changed our strategy and move to move towards de-risking the portfolios de-risking the entire first of all the movement towards ram segment is the first priority is to de-risk the portfolio the entire advanced portfolio it diversifies diversifies the risk now within the ram now the question that is actually coming uh regarding the the negative sentiments of consumption etc and in certain segment particularly in the unsecured segment and credit card business first of all if in our bank we are not in that area we are doing personal loans but personal loans are our our delinquency is very limited 
we are we are uh, very well positioned in that because the personal loans are basically done for salary accounts though it is a though it is a unsecured loan but it is for on salary accounts so our our overall portfolio remains healthy the other unsecured part which uh, normally in a banking system is the education loan there again we are comfortable as as far as we are concerned the credit card business we don't have so these three segments wherein the entire 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 uh, what you call the ecosystem and the regulator is also uh, pointing out on various forums that these are segments where we uh, we need to be careful about so first of all we are not in those segments if we are growing we are trying to grow in in solid retail vehicle gold gold loan also some of some here and there factors are there but again as of now our bank is well positioned in the gold loan portfolio it is giving us good returns so we, we and we have got a robust system in place also uh we service the what are uh, the regulator and various other stakeholders are talking about but in our bank it is a it is a low base so we have a lot of scope to improve our gold loan portfolio so vehicle loan is doing well the the housing loan uh, also the coal lending of course another area we are working very closely we are already increased our coal lending portfolio to 2900 crores uh, for the uh, for the q2 and we have good partners around 10 partners we are having in the coal lending uh, space which as of now our 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 experience is very healthy we have got in some robust places there we'll do some direct assignments of housing loan of very reputed banks this quarter also we have done a, a, a amount on that so overall in terms of the risk perception of the retail segment we are not forcing in our bank uh, the uh, the that challenge uh, but as things play out we will we'll be very conscious of what is happening in the system but uh, so far the the segments that we are trying to uh, trying to build up on trying to grow are segments which are well with good mitigants and 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 the areas of uh, which are which are giving me good returns also our gst product if you see uh, we have been talking on this subject the gst which gives us our bank is gives loan as far as amount as up to 10 crores is a very well is a very good product for the bank which talks on the cash flows of msmes and in that situation we have already created a portfolio of 1500 crores in gst and the delinquency there again is 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 under control and nearly it is virtually negligible i can tell you that so again this is a area where it gives me good good yields and of course we have the we will also go into the renewables we'll go into the lrds uh, which are uh, in, in the corporate segment which will give me a, a better uh, yield also and also a, a, a secured uh, portfolio so these are some of the areas in which we are working on thank you sir our next question is from the line of ms surbhi ma'am please go ahead with your question Yes. Good afternoon. Uh, I we will move on to the next question. Uh, I'll request Mr. Sushil to please ask your question. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Joksi. Sir, why is it that you have all the renewables in place? Joksi ji, thoda sa louder. I think the sound come. Can you come to the mic a bit closer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, can yeah. you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Loud and clear. Please go ahead. I said congratulations on a very stable and a positive result. Thank you. With my team, and you have a great team now to work on credit growth, which is reflecting in your result. Yeah. Sir, my first question is, how are we going to improve our casa? to get our margins up from 2.75 towards 3 that's the question only or you have some more no, no, i'll come one after another okay sure sure uh, see uh, uh, th this is a challenging area for all of us in today's ecosystem uh, all the ratios are coming down every banks all the means the, all banks casa ratios are coming down <coughs> and particularly we have a challenge because Our geographical presence is still not as it should be 
in a, in a public sector bank and we are facing uh, this challenge and we are trying to not only the, the, the challenge of uh, some of the unethical practices being done by some of the uh, some banks I will not use any uh, adjective for that uh, outside, outside the public sector space uh, there is there are certain things that are happening uh, and in our geographical areas we have come to know about it we, first of all we have to in terms of customer retention we need to build upon that in terms of customer acquisition we are trying to uh, what we are trying to do is create more and more customer friendly products uh, uh, both on the uh, liability side and also asset side what we understand and what we have uh, internally strategized is while we can we will continue to uh, hunt for more and more standalone casa retail term deposits but the crux will remain is that we have to do more lending on the msme side to improve our casa that is a correlation between the current account portfolio and the msme advances that happen in the bank so our, at present our msme portfolio is growing at 11% not good enough at this point we need to increase it to a much higher level and acquire more and more uh, msme customers so we have decided that we will go for in this q3 and q4 and actually decided in today's today itself that we will be holding special msme drives in all the 25 zones for every fortnight and we will uh, we will press upon the point to our field functionaries that it is important for casa to lend also so we need that is another area collaborations as we discussed earlier we have we are now created a lot of collaborations particularly defense and other institutes in punjab state civil supply uh, punjab uh, employees association uh, uh, then mcd chandigarh then mcd lucknow so many other salaried we need to mobilize more and more salaried accounts into our bank and and for that we need to have excellent customer service excellent user experience on a digital app you will appreciate that our psb unique app today in the google plus store is rated at 4.70 which is the highest among the public sector banks so we have moved from 3.7 to 4.7 in a matter of one year and that has happened one particularly due to the finical upgradation in october that has happened we have been able to add various value added services now we are having mutual fund business in that we are having ppf in that in that in that uh, uh, what do you call um, psb unique app we have also uh, other various other products that is in the pipeline loan against fds so these are some of and many others are in the pipeline some of them are mentioned in in our presentation uh, at the end of the uh, slides that we have so customer acquisition will be is correlated with not only advances it is also correlated with services that we provide uh, value added services both at the brick and mortar level and also in the digital level so in both the areas we need we are concentrating on improving customer service both physically and interaction and also digitally to provide more and more backup so that uh, uh, we can we can build on that and these things will slow some of the new projects that we are having uh, we have talked on that before but it is worth repeating them also again today is that the the new projects that we are taking to build up this casa uh, component and which will be implemented in 5 to 6 months time is one is of course the casa back office which will not only take care of the the regulatory part but from the business part we are going to introduce certain new methods of technology new methods of technology for customer acquisition like tap banking and that that may come around january february then we are also revamping the rfp zone for the call center revamp which will have the give us give us the crm module also again 5 to 6 months time third we are going to have a though uh, though forex uh, though it is a forex matter but again it is somewhere related the forex trade trade module is going to come very short not uh, in another 5 to 6 months time so these new projects are that are going to come are very important we have created a data analytical cell now which gives us lot of uh, ideas on how to do cross selling to our captive customers which will also help us in 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 creating this uh, creating uh, this uh, uh, this environment of acquisition of uh, casa accounts i think 
this will as we it is not that this will happen overnight but once we take the right steps in the right direction i think overall uh, it, it, it will it will it will play its part in the in the coming uh, time in the coming times so that was on 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 casa and of course uh, just an added point is that while we will consider on casa we are now moving in a casa plus retail term deposit way you know we are trying to build that we are at 72 odd percent at this point of time we like to build it up to 75 and then move to 80 percent so the over at least the account uh, the depositor is retained and which will give me a fair lift to increase my advances and get out of the bulk and the and the cd uh, borrowings that we do how much of cd and bulk deposit we have see uh, i'll tell you 72% is the casa and retail so the balance is bulk and cd the bulk is around 20 and the cd is the rest percent 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 say you been a trendy person also in the past so between yourself ravi mera and rajiv do you think that the interest rate scenario in 25 first quarter rbi should be acting global interest rate scenario has peaked the interest arbitrage between treasury and corporate this may be the right time to move from treasury to corporate credit and this is my my thinking and if the yield is moving between 650 to 670 in next quarter how are we going to capitalize to balance with the low casa and locking in long term bonds or maybe loans which are Yielding you nine percent or eight seventy five or nine and a quarter, and where your deposit rates are where we are. Yeah, that that that's a market dynamics. Uh, we are uh, over the last two quarters. I can tell you, Mr. Choksi, is that over the last two quarters we have been we have moved a bit away from treasury, and and deployed in a higher yielding asset of credit. So that we have done in a small way. I'm not saying in a big way. but we because we were very conscious of this the yields coming down in in one or two quarters so we were conscious but we balanced it a bit so we were able to the the, the sequential growth that you are seeing in the credit some part is of course due to some sort of a reduction in the in the treasury we didn't build it up to the level we could have built up now coming to your second part in terms of the global we all you know the global and domestic situation and there is there is a that the rate cuts maybe the rate cuts will actually eventually play out in the next financial year so we uh, we are now looking into how wherever opportunity the, the bottom line now is this instead of really having a script to script uh, uh, strategy the bottom line is this that we will invest in a higher yielding investment or higher yielding uh, what do you call the uh, the assets that we have we have in pipeline so Uh, that would be a uh, uh, that would be the overall strategic thinking, and and try to improve our yields on investment. See if you see our yields on investment is at seven point zero six, right? And our yield on advances is six point eight point seven five. So uh, there is a gap there. So now sources have to be deployed either in investment and in or in assets. So from that perspective, whatever best comes. uh uh i i ask madam mahima to to in, in the treasury front if you have anything to contribute my treasury head will will now supplement anything she wants to add yes sir as uh, sir has said that we have consciously reduced our portfolio uh, around 1200 crores and we are not built up that way but if you see that our treasury uh, if you include the profitability also then it will be 7.85 and in the coming also uh, due to the rate cut scenario we are managing our portfolio in a way that because slr requirements are also there we have to maintain from that perspective also so in overall scenario we are managing our trading book in a such a way that we can uh, fund the liquidity we can have the good liquidity also we can improve the advances and the tax income also sir sir what is unavailed credit sanction as of today on your books yeah mr mera uh, good afternoon sir ravi mera this side so it's around 4000 crores 4000 crores So yeah, I think when you ask this question a few quarters back, we had we were we were we were a bit uh, subdued. We were a bit subdued. Now we can actually just tell you that. No, sir, this question, huh? sir, I'm asking this question because the vibrant environment is visible on the presentation colors as well as in the numbers. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Yeah. Sir, uh, my next question before I come to the next round. Basically, 
we know where the bank stands. What for digital transformation? You started the digital journey. Where are we reached up on digital on the digital journey? How much spend we've done, and what is likely to emerge in the next six months or the next year? The bottom line answer on this, in a one liner, is that you will find a lot of changes that are coming in the next six months. Uh, it's too premature to to be to, for me to tell you exactly what are the areas which you are working on. Uh, but one thing I can assure you, as I just gave you a small example of the rating improvement, which gives an overall idea how the app is now behaving to a to a, towards a customer, and that is very important. The UI UX experience is very important in 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 this part. So there, there are multiple projects that we have taken. Some of them have been listed in the presentation. I'm not repeating them. But two things which can be talked about here is that uh, the corporate biz app means we are having a retail app, you know, uh, for for the which is doing so well. Now to mobilize current account, which is also a part of the of the uh, current account acquisition, uh, we are developing the corporate biz app. We will we'll give some name on that. But the internally, the biz app is uh, going on, and within three to six months' time, we'll be able to provide updated facilities to current account holders through our business app. That will be a game changer for the bank in terms of customer acquisition and retention. And besides that, as I, as I told you, that we already started very advanced level of value-added services. In the app, like sort of mutual fund, we didn't have some of these things products. We'll bring the, we'll bring, we have already brought that. So today, uh, we are, uh, all the customers of our bank can open a DMAT account through my app. And it is a very, very customer friendly experience. We are already building up on that. And I'm very sure in the long run, this, it will improve the stickiness of the customer. So I'm only saying a few of them. There are multiple ones. Once we cross the bridge, I think we'll announce it. And, and accordingly, you will find a lot of, lot of traction happening through our app. What is the, why are we so confident on this? You can ask me. The confidence comes from the basic point that my core banking technology has been upgraded last October. And this is the time where we are building it up. Last October means October last year, right? So now the, 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 Impediments to do a transformation uh, in in digital side, which is particularly the base, that has now gone. Now it is only now adding those products on that base. So I think some sort of, uh, but talking about exactly what are the things we'll do, we'll maybe you know one quarter down the line we'll hold our cards and we'll announce it slowly. Thank you, sir. Our next question is from Mr. Sake. Sir, please go ahead with your question. Uh, yeah, you can hear me, sir? Yeah, please. Yeah, Mr. Sake. Carry on. Uh, yes, sir. So, sir, you were explaining about the granular details of uh, the RAM part of the story. Uh, but, sir, as we see the trend today, uh, almost every Every bank is moving toward this RAM part, building a RAM part of the portfolio. And with the same set of uh, understanding that it is going to derish their bank from the delinquencies going ahead. Uh, could you please explain the reasons that why, uh, why are the banks not uh, moving towards the corporate part of the story? Because the growth uh, in the lending could always be headed by the corporate side. Uh, if you could just explain the story, not only for Punjab Sin Bank, almost all banks, wherever the calls we are hearing, everybody is trying to build a portfolio that is skewed towards the RAM part of the portfolio. And everybody is exiting uh, the, the corporate book. So if, if there is degrowth in the corporate sector, uh, where the actual lending or where the actual contribution will come into the economy? That was my, my, my basic point, sir. Uh. So I, I, I will talk less about the system and more about my bank. Okay, it, it helps the context also. So now system, what we can say is that while, while we appreciate the point that there can be a, a herding of 
run segment portfolio by all the banks. That, that's, that's, that, that is a possibility. And, and uh, we need to be conscious of, of that process. But uh, in, terms of our, in terms of our ecosystem, you will find that the corporate segment today, one part is that the opportunities are not as that much as you think it is to be. Okay, the CapEx particularly. We are having other segments, but the CapEx particularly are not having, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so what what is also the second part is very, very important. What important part is this, that the pricing war that goes into a corporate segment portfolio there's a, literally a price war. The corporates have become more bar bargainable, so they bargain to the most. And we are all cutting each other sometimes in, to, in terms of retaining customers, in terms of building portfolios, which in the long run is not a healthy way of, or, or I'll, I'll tell you in the other word, is sustainable way of, of growth. So the First of all, the sectors are limited. Secondly, wherever opportunities are there, there is a pricing issue. And as you know, there is a lot of lot of uh, pressure on the liabilities with the LCRs. The LCR, LCR part is also needs to be taken care. The lag effect between deposit growth and credit growth. So these are multiple factors which you cannot just ignore while you strategize the, the things going to be done in going forward. And come, now coming to my bank, my bank had a portfolio of corporate around 55% at one point of time. And what happened? We all know what happened. And we were a small bank. Three, four, four, five corporates on the NBFC segments went bust. Some banks were able to sustain themselves in some way, but we got into brick trouble. So in terms of the appetite, in terms of the capital ratios that we have, we we think that it is for a bank of our size needs to move away from the corporate. The corporates will do where we get good returns and we are much more comfortable on the, not only on the return on investment, on the asset, but also on the return of the money. Number two is that the risk concentration of segments in, in the corporate segment sometimes can create a systemic issue. You must be hearing the regulator talking frequently on one or two segments. Some actions have been taken on certain segments. So these are, these are some of the areas where we need to be conscious about. So our, our point is that in, in our case, we, we have shifted gears. And in a, if you see in our bank's own books at this point of time, my yield on advances in the RAM segment is at more than 9.5, while the yield on advances on the corporate segment is much less. So ultimately, it's a balancing game. The deposits that we have, the resources that we, we, we mobilize in the market has to be deployed in a in a profitable manner and that's the and that's the diverse, diversification we need to do we are now building a lot of retail products uh, sorry msme products equipment financing food processing cluster based financing and more the more we diversify on various segments within the ram not only it, it diversifies the risk it also gives me better returns on my assets so that is what I, it is my view why we have moved towards this. Because RAM is not only retail, RAM is a retail agri MSME. Please appreciate that. And within retail, there are secure, unsecured, mortgage-based loans, personal loans. We are not in the personal loans segment. We are not in the credit card business. We are not in the, so much in the education loan. We are in GST. We are in mortgage housing loans, car loans, gold loans, lap, loan against properties. 
and for us those segments are doing well and we are going to bring in digital journeys i forgot to mention in a previous question that we are now bringing the digital lending into our digital store in 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 the in the retail and msme segments so there again we we are conscious so i think these are some of the factors at this point of time of course we can always take a call when the ecosystem take advises us to take a call but at this point of time we feel that uh this is a better option for the bank thank you sir our next question is from the line of ms surbhi tiwari ma'am please go ahead with your question good evening ma'am sir i think there is a issue with the connectivity we'll move on to the next question from mr rajiv shrivastava uh, sir please go ahead and ask your question hello yeah good evening mr shrivastava uh, hi sir thank you thank you for this opportunity uh, my question is uh, your guidance for the slippage ratio is below 1.25 1.25% 1. for fy25 uh with the actual figure at 0.52% as of september 2024 so what steps are you taking to control slippages uh, especially in the msme and agriculture segments yeah see uh, uh the guidance uh, what you have given i think uh, we have kept in mind the the slippages that has uh, that may occur in agri msme and retail partially and also a few mid corporate sized accounts you know that uh the emptiness story has already played out uh the uh, on 8 october our bank has also declared the account as npa we have exposed around 171 crores in that and we also provided it fully in terms of the classification in the 30th september results itself so we have but that will be part of the story unless or until some resolution happens in the industry segment so mtnl is one area uh we have uh, in in terms of the collection efficiency of the uh, sorry and another two one one account of course is being also reported in the notes to accounts the johnson rubber it continues to be classified as standard uh, but the account is technically npa due to the high court order stay we have not we have not classified the account as npa but we are holding more than uh, 60% or nearly 65% provision in that account so we will uh, uh, so that part is also there we have also another a mid corporate account on a on a residential mortgage uh, a project loan uh, which is under the sma2 category uh, uh, we are on, on the uh, on the sma2 category uh, it's about a 100 crore account we are fully provided not fully sorry the if it, if the account slips we have provided adequately uh, uh, in the 30th september result so these these are some of the accounts which may slip uh one has already slipped mtn has already slipped uh, and which will impact our uh, ratio a bit but from the profitability side we are already uh, uh, protected uh on the ram segment what we have done uh, we have started doing centralized calling we have we identify accounts the call center is activated <coughs> the department is activated and then important structural change that we have brought in in the bank is creation of a credit mid office concept in the zonal offices what these mid offices do and this has been implemented just recently is that they go through each of the sanctions that are before disbursement they go through and do a due diligence and the approvals are given by a centralized office in zonal office and some in head office in some big cases for disbursement of loans and they also monitor constantly beyond a cut off uh, of the loans that that are sanctioned our our we send regular smss to the uh, borrowers uh, for, towards the for reminding them about their uh, overdues we have implemented the nach mandate in a very big way this was a bit lacking in our bank a lot of accounts were not uh, uh, register as, as from the ecs point of view or the nach point of view or the si point of view in our accounts so that 
Chinese instructions have been put into place. So therefore, you will find if you the, the collection efficiency of the bank was overall was hovering around 60 percent two and a half years back or three years back. And that has moved to like that has now moved to 97.82 percent in 30th September. Overall, I'm sorry, I'm saying. So uh, in, uh, within the segments, it will like the MSMEs, things will vary. But the overall collection efficiency has has improved to 97.82 percent. And that's a fair enough move, uh, positive movement that we have done. So various methods, we are now strengthening our underwriting engines, uh, monitoring at the branches. We have created back office structures for uh, sanctioning of loans. Earlier, all the sanctions were done at the branch level. Now, branch powers are limited. It goes to the back office. And again, the trend shows that the delinquency of the accounts that have been sanctioned by the back office is is very very negligible, and uh, and therefore this gives us encouragement to bring this sort of practices in the bank, which will take care of the future delinquencies. Yes, some of the legacy accounts within agriculture and maybe a bit of MSME are still there. We don't ignore that, but our our top priority, our credit monitoring division is working very hard and that's how you are seeing the significant downward trend in the fresh slippages that have happened and for the september quarter of our bank which is particular in the punjab and northern side restricting the agriculture slippages to only 85 crores uh, i think the teams have done well in that but you cannot be complacent anything can happen on agriculture side a lot of you know there are a lot of political announcements that can happen we have to be conscious of that that but the monitoring teams are, are now well engrossed in improving the collection efficiency. We have to do a bit of improvement in MSME and retail also in terms of the segment wise. But I think things are picking up in the right direction. Uh, Rajivaji, if you want to add anything, my ED uh, monitoring. Uh, <clears throat> sir, you have already spent uh, all these steps that we have taken. And of course, there is uh, marked improvement in the uh, quality of underwriting after creation of uh, centralized back office. And apart from that, as you have touched, regularly we are in touch with all the borrowers uh, for uh, timely repayment. And of course we have implemented early warning systems also. Mm -hmm. So that throws uh, uh, the early warning signs and uh, then we take uh, remedial steps. So with all these steps and uh, as adequately reflected in the numbers also. So uh, this year, in September, the uh, retail slippage was uh, 47 crores, as I did 62 last year. Similarly, there has been reduction in agriculture and MSME also. So overall, uh, the slippage ratio has come down. And hopefully going forward also, we uh, look towards uh, lesser, uh, lesser slippage uh, going forward. So that's it. Thank you, sir. Our next question is from Mr. Ashlesh. Uh, sir, he wants to know that uh, you seem to have classified the PSU Telecom account as NPA, while mm -hmm. other banks have classified it as NPA. Any reason? See, uh, that uh, that the NPA is based on a prudential guideline on the 90-day period. So our NPA became, as from our disbursements and overdues, our, disbur our overdue, the 90-day period was getting over on 8th October. So we declared it on 8th October. However, we are fully provided for the, uh, fully means 15% provision has been done in the, in our 30th September itself. Thank you, sir. Our next question is from Mr. Saki. What is the update on dilution of Government of India shareholding? Uh, we have taken a plan of 2000 crores of QIP. Uh, we have taken the approvals. We have announced it also. The merchant bankers are now on board. Uh, we are going through the legal process of, of appointing a legal counselor for that. And very soon, we will be in in, in touch uh, with the market. And we will time it accordingly. But 2,000 crores of QIP is still, is, is on the on the cards, either this quarter or next quarter. And apart from that, uh, that is part of the dilution that may happen on the government side. Apart from that, we have also uh, taken uh, approvals for uh, 5,000 crores of intra bond. We may raise it, uh, issue it in tranches, and another 2,000 crores of 
3,000 crores, sorry, I'm sorry, 3,000 crores of tier one, tier two bonds. So this overall 10,000 crores of capital raising out of that 2,000 is QIP, which impacts the dilution. So uh, we will be, uh, we were waiting for this Q2 results. Now we are trying to, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll approach the market at the right time. Thank you, sir. Uh, the next question is from Ms. Isha Mehta. One, RAM now forms 53.86% of the total advances. What is your target for RAM's contribution in the next few quarters? Second, whether the bank is looking to reduce the share of corporate loans in the future and focus on increasing the RAM loans in the portfolio. I think we have answered that. Anyway, the guidance, if you see the last page, it shows more than 56%. So we are moving in that direction. And if that happens, the corporate segment will reduce. Thank you, sir. Our last question is from Mr. Choksi. Uh, sir, please go ahead with your question. Yes, Mr. Choksi. Sir, I think uh, there is some connectivity issues. We'll wait for a moment. Thank you. As there are no further questions from the participants, we now conclude this conference. Should you have any further queries, please reach out to Ms. Mamta Samant at 993062514 or mamta.samant1 at tensu.com. Details are mentioned in the WebEx chat and the analyst invitation sent to you earlier. On behalf of Punjab and Sin Bank, I thank each one of you for joining the conference call today. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you and have thank a good day. Thank you, Shilpa. Thank you.